Hello Year 11, I hope you're doing well, well, as well as you can be in these difficult times. Now, I never thought that your exams would be cancelled. It's never happened when I've been teaching, it's never happened in my lifetime, but that's where we are at the moment. But what I've done is I've put some material together to support you if you're thinking about doing A-level physics next year, which by the way, you should consider because GCSE physics is good, I mean it's better than chemistry and biology, but it's nowhere near as good as A-level physics. Because to be honest, um, we kind of lie to you a bit, we kind of have some very simple models, and when it gets onto A-level, you suddenly realise that there are so many more interesting bits that we've never taught you before. So not just the stuff you do maybe at the end of year 13, where we're looking at space and particle physics and things like that, but even the stuff that you're doing in year 12, you go into a lot more detail than you do at GCSE. Now, I'm gonna put some sessions together to help hopefully support you over the summer. So by the time you start back in school, you know kind of what's gonna be happening so you're not too far behind. Now, if you know where you're gonna be going to sixth form, maybe it's the school where you're currently at at the moment, maybe you could email or contact the teachers to find out what work they want you to do. But there's basically um, some things that everybody should be thinking about as they prepare for A-level physics in the future. So, just let me just give a very brief overview of what A-level physics is. First of all, there are different exam boards. So there's OCR, AQA, Edexcel, WJC, EDUCAS, CIE. There are loads of different exam boards, but pretty much everybody follows the same stuff in year 12. And there's maybe a few options in year 13 where some people do optional topics, um, but it doesn't really matter because effectively everybody doing A-level physics will go on to do the same types of degrees at university. So first of all, don't worry too much about which exam board you're doing. They all roughly work in the same way, where you have um, different content that might be taught by a couple of teachers at school. So normally you're probably used to having one physics teacher. You might now have two different teachers and they, uh, they sort of share how they teach that course. Also, you're going to get a lot more physics lessons than you would have done at GCSE. So you probably have maybe four lessons a week, depending again on how your school timetable works. But basically, there's going to be lots and lots of physics. And the good thing is that probably 95% of students doing A-level physics do A-level maths as well. And the two subjects really support each other. If you're looking at equations of motion that we call the SUVAT equations, you might have seen some of this at GCSE, but you'll be doing it in the GCSE maths, the A-level maths classroom and the A-level physics classroom. And the two things really kind of go together quite well. So if you're thinking about doing A-level physics, then it's worth doing A-level maths as well, especially if you want to go on to do engineering or physics or some subject like that in the future. Now, in terms of the exams, uh, this depends if you're in England or another country. Um, there are AS levels, which stand for Advanced Subsidiary Levels, and these ones here are becoming less popular because in England, they don't count towards your final grade. Now, some students do them, and they're really good because it means on your UCAS application, which you might be putting in for university, when you put that application into your university, they can already see some grades that you've currently got. So some schools do that, some don't, but you're going to be learning the same content anyway. And then at the end of year 13 is when you normally have three exams. So if you're in England, you'd have three two-hour exams, so six hours of exams in total. Um, if you're in Wales, then the AS levels count towards um, your final grades. So you maybe have some exams in year 12 and some exams in year 13. Again, the details don't really matter. What's important is that you're thinking about doing physics and therefore what you need to do over the summer is try and prepare your way of thinking. So when you sit in that new classroom, it's not suddenly too daunting. Now, the content you're going to be doing, well, first of all, some of it is pretty much what you've done already at GCSE. So it might be looking at Ohm's law about the resistance is equal to V divided by I, but what you'll be doing is at the same kind of physics at a higher mathematical demand, which is really nice, it actually gets really interesting. You'll also be learning about topics that are similar to what you've been learning about, perhaps waves, but now we learn about new things. So rather than just having waves that transfer energy, and this is what we call a progressive wave, we also have waves that store energy called standing waves. And a lot of you might be familiar with a practical way you had a string uh, that was vibrating and you looked at the wavelength to work out the speed of the wave on that string. 
Well, this is an example of a standing wave. We also look at things like diffraction, which is waves spreading out, and then waves interfering with things like double slits and diffraction gratings. So really interesting stuff. And then also you're going to be looking at new topics, so maybe electric fields and what happens if you put charged particles in electric fields or magnetic fields. There's loads and loads of stuff that just gets progressively more and more interesting. And then that's really useful when you're looking at things like nuclear physics, when you're looking at space and astrophysics. It's just so much better than GCSE, so just trust me on that. And therefore it's important that you just have a go at it. And, you know, if you've done well at GCSE, and you're wanting to work hard, you can do well at A-level. So what I've got are some sessions coming up over the next few weeks. Now these are not compulsory because I'm not going to check if you do it, but they're often recommended by some physics teachers to say, you know, if you want some extra support, if you want some work to do, have a go at these sessions. Um, and you can do them now. You can do it when I'm doing live streams on YouTube to support each session, or you can do it over the, I suppose, summer holidays um, between sort of this term and the start of next term. It's really up to you. But basically in these sessions, what I'm going to do is, I suppose, cover some of that work. And this includes revising what you currently know at GCSE. So a lot of it might not be new knowledge, but it might just be revising some of the important stuff that you maybe did a couple of years ago. So we're looking at revising that material from GCSE and actually making sure you understand it. That's important. You need to understand it, not just know some facts. What I'm then going to do is actually, I suppose, show how that material leads on to A-level. So when we're looking at forces, for example, we might know that if you've got a force upwards and a force to the side, the resultant is going to be somewhere over there. But how can we show that mathematically using trigonometry all the time? How can we show if you've got a, a force here and a force there, how can you show mathematically the resultant of those two forces? So this is just building up a little bit on what you currently know. And I suppose the main thing you can do is have a go at some questions. And the questions I'm going to be setting you are ones that you can work through independently. It tells you if they're correct or not. And it also shows you there's lots more questions for you to have a go at. Now to support this, uh, and the videos I'm making and the live streams and the stuff on my website, there are some books that um, it's worth considering. The first one here has been written for you by a teacher and it's so much better than anything that I could write. So this one here is about preparing for the challenge of A-level physics. It's by Kit Betts Masters. He's got another YouTube channel called Gorilla Physics. And if you're thinking about doing A-level physics, then you should read this book. And I've got another video explaining this book in a little bit more detail. The other thing that I'm going to go on about is Isaac Physics. Now, some of you might be familiar with this from the GCSE book. Some of you might have found it a little bit difficult at GCSE because this is quite challenging work. But this is the perfect quality and standard of physics that you should be able to do as you're bridging that gap between GCSE and A-level. So what I'm going to be doing is setting you some work from the GCSE Isaac Physics book. And also there's lots of videos to support this because I made about 92 videos that support every chapter in this book. So if you if you get stuck on something, there's one video that I've got, as well as you can maybe, um, you know, now you're kind of working at a higher level, you can actually get on with some of this. But also, this is going to be really useful for A-level. I know that because I forced my students to use this when they were doing A-level and they got on with it and they did really, really well. OK, so this one here is about mastering pre-university physics. So that's A level. This has hundreds more questions at a slightly higher demand than this book over here. So I'm going to set some questions from this book as well that you'll be able to do, as well as some other level one questions on the Isaac Physics website. Now, the good thing about this is that anybody, if you're watching this video, you've got an Internet connection. That means you can access everything in in Isaac Physics because it's all online and you can also read this book online as well or you can buy the hard copy like I did. So what I'm going to be doing is setting up some sessions for you to have a go at. Now if you've got to the end of this video that is brilliant that means at least you're a little bit motivated and I'm going to do what I can to help you over the coming months kind of bridging that gap between GCSE which is good and A level which is so much better and if you're maybe, you know, really wanting to kind of see the kind of lessons and the kind of some of the subjects you'll be doing at A-Level, I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos that support the whole course at A-Level Physics Online. So it's bad times. Um, it's not ideal. But I know if you're motivated and you want to work independently, you can learn a huge amount, which means when you start your A-Levels in September, then you'll be um, in a good place 
So that means that means I suppose you actually do a lot better in the short term and then I suppose the longer term as well. So thank you for watching and if you haven't already done so make sure that you do subscribe to me on YouTube. Thank you very much.